Mga kuturan, before ko magbasa sa uh, eology this, uh, this afternoon, I would like to, to bring some things that my brother and my sisters have forgotten. Inchindihan ko sila mga kuturan, lapaw na sila 50. So, kalipat-lipat na sila. First thing, bago lang nagpungko, magula ko ginambal niya nga, nga nalimtan, no gali mention ng car care, pasalamatan. So, to one of our sponsors, <laughs> JR Car Care Center, thank you so much git sa, sa bulig. Kaga, nalimtan niya, may isa pa kautod si nanay nga Ari Dere, si Uncle Bukay. So, ara, tatlo pa kabilog mga kutura ng buhi. Gin, gin eliminate na niningi din. Buhi ka pa call, kita, tagin kaya. Okay. So, okay, tama na kadlaw, lubong ni. And uh, and one thing I gusto i, i remind ni ito to Edsel because uh, he mentioned a while ago that uh, sinana may ginbilin nga kwan may ginbilin nga verse and this verse is is very very important kaga kag gusto yagi di ipabalo okay, because this verse woke him up 11 years after ni nana ginhatag ang note siguro kung nabasahan niya earlier it would have awakened him up. But uh, I'm glad, I'm glad that uh, we're here right now to read this note. It says here, Proverbs 11 verse, uh, verses 4 and 28. It says, Riches are worthless in the day of the Lord, but righteousness delivers from death. Amen? Okay, and 28 it says, Whoever puts his trust in money, Will fall in the, will fall like autumn leaves, but those who put their trust in God will be like green leaves in a healthy branch. Wow! And uh, the last verse is Proverbs 23 verses 4 and 5. It says here, "Don't wear yourself out trying to get rich. Be wise enough to pace yourself through life. Don't look longingly at wealth. Riches often springs." Sprout wings and soar away like an eagle. Kuturan, I could really put an exclamatory point on these verses, especially I live the life of a missionary now. Kuturan, there's no uh, greater life or much happier life than a life with the Lord. Amen? Okay. So, I remember one time, again, before ko malimtan, i-dumduman ko na nga kung mga butangan mga dumduman. Uh, one time, nagbaisay kami ni nanay. Gusto ko na malakat sa kwan, malakat sa abroad. Kaya during that time, mara si Charlie sa Japan. So may offer to nga ubra. Kag may aray ko di ubra yung uh, as a photographer, dugay-dugay na to. At uh, ara pa si Arnie, upod ko pa sa lubrahan sa una. Ang akons will do sobra kagamay. Pero ang tito nga offer, mga kuturan do, I guess do mga sobra ba in tika pilo. Kaya isang uli ginapilit, higit ko maglakat. Kaya ako, naman na ako yung kinana yung pagkating aulo. So, wae ko na palakat, wala ko ginpasa ang last kong requirement sa sa CPU. So, hindi ko makuha diploma ko. Sa ulo yun, nabayas ako niya, tig, ah, ginulo. Hamba ko na eh. Hamba ko palakton mako to. Hamba ko balaan mo na yun. Balaan mo na yun kung anong rason. Ang kwarta hindi makapalipay sa tao. Mas malipay ko di karon sa obra ko. Kag kung tinto ko ba sa madula ko sa simbahan, Hamba ko, kag ginagusto yagin nga mag-successful ko. Hamba ko, ano yung pang define mo sa success? How? Hamba ko siya, ari na lang hamba ko sino, say, say mo, sin, o oh, mas mali pa yun, sin tutuin silo ako. Hamba niya, ikaw. <laughs> hamba ko, sige, hindi ito nakapagsabaron. Mga kuturan, amuna si nanay. Okay, so I'd like to read to you about uh, who Silvia Pistanio Castor was and is. A brave and strong-willed woman, that is how most of the people who knew her would describe her. That is true. She's actually very brave and very strong that would make her look so intimidating to most of us. She's not afraid to confront issues, deal with problems, and most of those problems were not hers, never backs down in a fight. She is quite scary. I even remember when I was growing up that the kids in our neighborhood would try so, to scare one another, would not use the praise, Uy, may police or may aswang. But they will say, Ara na sinang Silvia! <laughs> and I remember growing up, 
I remember growing up, I always go to the church, not because I was a faithful kid, but because I fear my mother more than I fear the Lord. Balaan ko ako hindi ko magkanto simbaan, bali, unyag itiil ko. Kaya mga kuturan, you know what? I never, I never regret to have a mother like that. Nga pilito niya ka. It's because during those moments, if pasugta lang ko ano gusto ko, mga kuturan, I would do crazy things. And I'm glad that the Lord put me in that household. The, that that nanay disciplined me, the discipline that I really needed. And I'm so happy for that. Yes, she could be quite scary, especially when you are not doing something right. And when she sees you headed on the wrong path of life, she would not hesitate to call you out, sit you down, and straighten you up. Her hobbies were... Her hobbies were... Minding other people's problems and giving unsolicited advices. It is not because... She is a nosy person who would want to involve herself in other people's business, but because she has a huge concern for those people that the Lord has placed in her path. Yes, she has a huge heart. So huge that everybody seems to be accommodated in that big heart of hers. When the news came out about her passing, a lot of people were affected by our loss. They told me that they could not respond right away because they were in tears. I realized that it was not just me and my siblings who had lost a mother, but there are a lot of people that she had been a mother to. She was a mother, an auntie, and a lola to everyone. Whoever, whenever these people need at that time in their lives, she was that to them. A mother to everyone. That is why most of the people I grew up with called her Nanay Bayang. Sometimes I would think that our house was a barangay hall. People would run to her with every need that they have. If somebody is sick, they go to her. Somebody dies, they go to her. Somebody is dying, they go to her. And you know what? Nanay would go from house to house and then uh, she will tell those people, Buli ginyo ni, nyakay kung ilubong ni, atag makamuya pun kwarta, sampang duhi, bay, atag nakamudan kwarta. And then it works. And if there's a family dispute, she settles them in their house or sometimes in our house. All types of emergencies, they think that she is the solution. Our house became not just a barangay hall, but also a police station, a clinic, a charitable institution, even at one point a church, and at one point a fire station. People knew that she would give her the best, and she would give her them, and she would give them herself. There was one time, mga kuturan, every time may kinanla, nagadlaga na sila sa kay nanay, nang Silvia may ginbuno to, nang Silvia may galag sanay to, nang Silvia may katiruhay to, hambal ni tatay, guwa ka da, karun kay, nabali ka gin. And there was one time nagambal, may dlagan nga, nagdlagan nga, tawag mo niya, nang Silvia may sunog, hambal ni din, ano duman yung kay nanay, bumbiro? She would not ask for anything in return. She was a superwoman. If there were more people like her, I think this world would be a better place. Mind you, she was not perfect. Sometimes her ways were rough. She could be harsh sometimes. She could be so aggressive that she would appear so intimidating to some. But I wonder why most were not offended by her actions. I finally saw why. Because in that, they saw love. Her ways or approach might be rough or tough, but her motives are pure. With her, there are no hidden agendas. She would help you because you need it and not because she want you to do her a favor. She, was a rough, she has a rough exterior, but inside a very kind heart. Yes, kindness is one of her strongest qualities. It was actually because of her kindness that this church was started. There was once a struggling employee in a certain company who got almost nothing and my mom will let her eat whatever she has on her table and treated her like, like her own sister or daughter. But a few years later, this woman became a millionaire. And guess what? She remembered my mother's kindness and asked her to ask anything that she wanted. And my mom asked for a church. And that is how this, the first tiny church came about. But for my mom, the church was not enough. She never stopped coming to this woman until this woman finally gave her life to the Lord because that was the first intention of my mom. 
For my mother, it's not all about material things. It's all about souls. It's all about people. It's all about eternal salvation. And growing up with a mother like her was quite, a, quite tough, especially for my two sisters. For some mothers, they would do girly stuff with their, with their daughters, like shopping for dress, shoes, makeup, and etc. With my mom, it's quite different. On some afternoon, in broad daylight, she would ask my two sisters to accompany her to La Paz Lumber and gather wood shavings, ang sirin bila that she would use for cooking. So they would be there on the side of the road helping my mom with a spade, my pala, in their hands, helping my mom to put all those sirin in the sack. This would be one of the most embarrassing moments for my sisters. They would try everything just to hide their, pa their faces from the passers-by. And after that, they would push the mountain of sacks on a cart straight home. Do sa pelikula, na nabla nga pasan ko ang daigdig. Matyagan nila sila si Sharon. Okay. My mother would often tell us that we should never be ashamed of hard labor. She would always tell us, labor is honor. And that was ingrained in every one of us. None of her kids were lazy. It is because we have seen it in her. Her example speaks louder than her words. She would always give advices to young ladies that they should be modest. And it is, it is not just the physical appearance that attracts men, but character. She'll often say, hard to get, hard to forget. Easy to get, easy to forget. Remember her words? Okay. She would often boast of her one major achievement, and that is having Tatay as her husband. She'd often say, you'll see, it's not the look that matters. How can a handsome guy like your Tatay could fall in love with an ugly girl like me? <laughs> yes, she's not ashamed to say that she was not blessed with physical beauty. Actually, I was looking at her picture when I was making the slides. She looked like Miriam Defensor Santiago in some pictures. <laughs> when I looked at my sisters, I could say that they were not the most beautiful ladies on the block. <laughs> But I could see that a lot of suitors were trying to get their attention. Mm. Our mother's method really works. Her personality became quite handy on how my sisters handle their suitors. Whenever they like the guys, they entertain them themselves. But whenever the guys are not so favorable, they ask our mother to entertain them. <laughs> In other homes, it is the father that the suitor fear the most, but in our household, it's nanay. But once you get her favor and approval, you get her heart and your place is secured. You might be fooled by the tough exterior that she displays because deep down, she's a very sensitive and a tender loving mother. Every time I am sick, I could always count on her gentle touch to soothe the pain. The moment she places her hand on my neck to check my temperature and rubs my back, that's when relief starts to happen. There's just healing in those hands. When Charlie went to the Middle East for work, you can always catch her crying. She would often sit at some corner and stare blankly. And there was one time I asked her, Nay, pilatig angon. And I was not, I was not uh, aware that she was crying. Nay, pilatig angon. And she was, doon natulala siya, Nay, pilatig angon. Duwag to nga. Okay. And when Ting Tong passed away, that just took a huge part of her. In Ining Eden's wedding, she held on tight to Ting Tong's photo while we were having a family portrait. That's why in Indai Edna's wedding, she made sure that Nanai will not have to include another member of the family in the photo who's not above the ground. When we have special days, she'd always set aside something special for our eldest brother, Edsel. We would often tell her that Edsel has had enough food in her, on, on his table and he was, he's rich already. She would tell us, it does not matter, he's still my son. I would always think that I was loved the least, but later I realized that we will have our own turns on our own time. Her treasure were her kids. Yes, you will always be a kid to her no matter how old, how old you'll get. She told me once, that she could not ask for anything more, that she feels like the richest person in the world. 
All she ever wanted was to see her family settled in the faith. And that's what she got. When it was my turn to go places, I would often find her crying before I leave. She would always want to say a prayer before, before I go. And at times, her words become so difficult to comprehend. Di mo sa mentindihan because of her stroke. I would often fill in some words in her prayers and sometimes end it myself. She would be in a bad mood if I left and she was not able to pray with me. And my friends would often tell me that my mom has been missing me and wanted me to be back home. There was even one time that she told everyone that Jemboy has died. But na si Jemboy. It was because I had been away for a couple of months straight. And when I came back home, she was so excited that she was in all tears. And she could, if she could run, she would run to give me a huge hug and smother me with, with her inhaling kiss. Remember when Nanay kisses you? <sighs> After that, I asked her, because she was hugging me, she was excited, and I asked her, Diin mo ko lubung? Last year, I was quite worried that she will be in so much despair when I will be gone for half a year. And I pray to the Lord that He will comfort her. And at that moment I was about to leave, her, mom, her memory began to deteriorate. And on the day that I left, she did not even recognize me. I guess that was God's answer to my prayer. It was better that she does not remember or else it would be tough for her. When I came back, it was still the same. And actually, it even got worse. There was not a single reaction in her face. And I know that it was better this way as long as she will be okay. But how I missed her reactions every time I come home. Those wide stretched arms, those twisted face due to crying so much, and those deep inhaled kisses. And one afternoon, while she was sitting in the sofa, I sat closely beside her and I put my arms around her. She placed her hand on my knee and she started to rub my knees with her thumb. Then I realized that she still recognizes me and that deep and sound, that non-responsive lady with blank stare gaze is my loving mother. Whenever she sees friends who have been away for a while, the main thing that she would want to know is not where do you work now or how much you earn or how many kids that you have, but she will ask, are you still faithful to your God? I guess one thing that would make my mother very sad is when she'll be in heaven and she will not see you there. She is a legend. Her legacy will live on. She has touched so many lives and brought a lot of them to the foot of Christ. Her life is an inspiration to most, if not all of us. She is an example that is not just educational attainment because my dear friend she has not finished high school she's just third year high school or a good family background or social status that will bring you success in life especially in the life to come it takes a huge heart a heart that loves others the way jesus did she did a good job raising her kids and even the kids of other people she taught us how to survive by showing us a great example most especially, she pushed and pulled us out of our comfort zone and brought us closer to the Lord. Her life speaks louder than her words. I, have not, I would not have been a missionary if it wasn't for her example. And I guess most of you would say the same thing. You are not the person you are today if it's not for her example. For those of you who have not met this woman in the prime of her years, you have missed a whole lot. If you have seen her five years ago up to the present, you might think that she's just a senile or a crazy old woman. My friends, she was a marvelous woman. As I have said, she was a legend. She is a legend. I'm going to miss this amazing woman. Sleep on, Nanay. You have done a wonderful job. Influence a lot of people for him. Now, it's our time to continue what you have started. For now, just wait for the time when, the, when your Savior looks you in the eye and tells you, Well done, my good and faithful servant. My friends, we love our nanay and we are proud to be called mga bata ni Bayang.